Here we go. Episode 15 of GBG. I'm fired up. I'm fired up for a couple of different reasons this week. First of all, most importantly, that's why I got the hat on backwards. I'm a big advocate. I'm one of these guys that says, you know what? The way your hat looks, the way the brim of your hat looks should also determine, you know, which way you want, you know, the direction of your life to go. Brim of your hat faces forward, your life's looking forward. The hat goes back. Well, it's kind of stuck in a rut. Um, I'm doing it this week because I'm fired up. First of all, this is the episode of Green Bay Greg, episode 15. That I'm looking forward to. I wanted to get it done right now. Uh, on it's, I'm on the RTS Sports Network, 1 o'clock Central, 2 o'clock Eastern on Wednesdays. You can see me on Facebook pretty much any time you want. I'm live on Facebook right now. It's Monday night, but the reason why I'm extremely fired up is because I do co-host another show, which I'm sure you guys are aware of, Twist, The Week in Sports Talk, and the two jackasses that I co-host with, Mike and Matt, respectively of Mike on the Mic and Benzie's Bit, are doing a fantasy draft right now. It's a dynasty league. I call it a keeper league, uh, and they're doing that right now. So the amount of times on my show that I get all fired up and I get to look back at my comments of people commenting on my show is going to be, and then I get all disappointed because I just realized it's one of those two jackasses wanting to see their own, you know, their own name on my feed. Uh, but I'm not going to see that this week because those two clowns are drafting fantasy players. And just so everyone knows how I feel about fantasy, I do fantasy football. I enjoy it. I enjoy the banter between friends. But I do believe in the sports world, there are two things that nobody, but nobody gives a shit about. Number one, your fantasy football team. Going to work Monday morning, going to work Tuesday morning, Wednesday morning, go out with your buddies. No one gives a shit who's on your fantasy football team. You think they do, but no one does. Mike Reeves, Mike on the mic, no one cares. Number two, thing that nobody cares about, and this is universal. Nobody cares what your March Madness bracket looks like. Why? Because the only people that talk about their fantasy, their uh, March Madness bracket are people who have about 20 different brackets because they're the jack wagon that comes in to work on Monday morning and says, oh, I picked that up, said I picked that 14 over the three, I picked that 12 over the five. Sure you did. In eight of your 20 brackets, you don't talk about the other ones. So just for Sake of sake of argument, sake of conversation. I only fill out one March Madness bracket. Love it or leave it. I might not do that well, but at least I can have a conversation and there's actual validity that backs up. There's actual thought. It's not, oh yeah, I picked them in this one, but not this one. Who do you have in your national championship game? This one. And then three weeks later, it's like, oh, you lost a couple weeks. No, I got Duke in one of the four other brackets I have. No. One bracket, no one cares. So I don't talk about it a lot. It is what it is. Now, if anyone wants my opinion on who I think is going to do well in March in college basketball, I'll tell you. But I know you don't care. It is what it is. All right. Let's jump right into it. we got some big sports talkers this week. The one sports talker uh, that I'm going to bring up this week is DJ Just Dustin Johnson. First leg of the PGA Tour Championship uh, Tournament, the FedEx Cup. Uh, Dustin Johnson shot a 30, I said 30 under par. And on uh, Twist, the week in sports talk, I picked him and Scotty Scheffler on Saturday morning as my two players to watch. Why? Scotty Scheffler is a young kid, shot a 59 on Friday. Dustin Johnson was 11 under par on his first 11 holes on Friday, shot a 60. So he parred out after that. Bottom line is, I wanted to see if any of those guys, either of those two guys could come back from that. Now, DJ over the weekend, Saturday and Sunday, shot a 63 and a 64 respectively. That's unheard of. Shooting's 30 under par. It's only been tw done twice before. Now, here's the thing. The two other times it's been done by Jordan Spieth and Ernie Els, they did it on the exact same course, 13 years apart. But the caveat to that, was it was a par 73. The course that DJ just did it on was a par 71. Now, what does that mean to all of you non-golf aficionados, golf enthusiasts out there? There were less par fives. Par fives are the holes where you have a better chance of uh, getting birdie or even eagle. A lot of these guys, especially guys like DJ, 
can drive the ball so far, you might be on the green in two. So you might have per, be uh, putting for eagle on your third shot or maybe a close chip. On a par 73, you have a lot more opportunities to do that. DJ did it on a par 71. He had eight less uh, or you know four less uh, par fives throughout this round, eight less than those guys would have had um, in, the, in the times they did it. Kudos to DJ. It was a great round. I actually, the reason why I enjoy watching golf so much is because you're looking for one of two things in golf when you're watching it on TV. Uh, three things, you know, give or take, but from a, from watching golf, you, most people either want to see a guy like what we saw this weekend or what we saw in two thousands with Tiger Woods. You want to see a guy lap the field, take off, go crazy, and let's see how well he can do. Or you want to see a battle between two, three, four, five guys on Sunday where they're going from shot to shot to shot to shot. This guy birdies the 17th. Now let's see what this guy's going to do on the 17th. So it's a lot of fun to watch. We got a lot of that in the past, you know, mainly because we don't have much else to watch. But we've had a lot of those head-to-head competitions on Sunday. So yesterday, it was nice to see DJ lap the field and see how, uh, well he could, how well he could do. And he did go 30 under which, like I said, was unbelievable. Moving on. You're better than that. Who is better than that this week? Who are we going to discuss? How about Earl Thomas, formerly of the Baltimore Ravens? Earl Thomas got into an altercation late last week. I think it was on Saturday with another teammate where he hit him. They got into a scuffle. You know, in football practices, this happens all the time. But Earl Thomas was kicked off the team. They sought a trade for the seven-time Pro Bowler, and since they couldn't find a trading partner, they just released him. I think it was today they officially released him. Sunday, I think that they made the announcement that they were going to release him. Well, you say, hey, Green Bay Greg, what's going on? A seven-time Pro Bowler? You know, in the handful of probably top 20, 25 defensive players over the past 20 years, why would they just release him, Green Bay Greg? Well, I'll tell you why. Because the guy's a jackass. He's not worth the trouble. Back in May, police had to be called because his wife is sitting there pointing a, pointing a gun at him. Now, why was his wife pointing a gun at him, Green Bay Greg? Because him and his brother were sitting around being less than, you know, you know they, they weren't, weren't exactly holding true to their marital vows with a whole bunch of women. So he causes all of this public controversy, all of this public backlash, which the Ravens now have to, you know, handle. They have to do damage control on all of this stuff. Earl Thomas is acting like a jack wagon because he's infidel- in, uh, committing infidelities. You know, you know, he, he's he's not exactly be, being faithful to his wife, and his wife goes batshit crazy. I'm not saying I advocate, you know, a wife pointing a gun at her husband, but if you're going to cheat on your wife, you get what you get. You don't throw a fit there, Junior. So what happens? So now he gets in this other, you know, this other scuffle with another player. Well, I think the Ravens just said, you know what? He's not worth it. So you know what? When you're on probation, whether it's actual probation or it's just the team saying, you you know what? This is your last chance. Don't begin in the skirmishes with guys on your team because you know what's going to happen. You're going to find yourself out on the street looking for a new team. And who wants, you know, who wants to deal with that baggage? Will he get picked up by someone else? Sure. But I also have a feeling he's going to lose several million dollars in the process. Earl Thomas, what you thinking, dude? You're better than that. Well, maybe you're not. You know what? A lot of these times when I do the whole you're better than that, after I talk it out for three to five minutes in the topic, I usually realize that these guys aren't better than that. They're just jackasses. So, Earl Thomas, you know what? You're just a jackass. You know? Um, let's move on. Let's go into uh, GBG's moment of zen. What am I going to talk about in my moment of zen? Well, the NBA playoffs have started. We're either getting done with the first round or the first round of the NBA playoffs is soon wrapping up. And uh, what we're seeing is a lot of one-namers. What do I mean by one-namers? If I say Luka, Giannis, Draymond, uh, Kawhi, you know, the beard, PG, you know, all these guys that I'm saying, you know, uh, LeBron, obviously, AD, all these nicknames, these one names, we know who we're talking about. Everyone knows who you're talking about. Why? They're saying that the NBA ratings in the bubble are down. Maybe they are, maybe they are. I don't care because I'm actually enjoying it. 
it's fun to watch. Why this is the 15th episode of GBG. I've probably said it 14 other times before today. I love stories. I'm not as much a fan of looking at the scoreboard as I love stories. And these are really cool stories. Watching Luca last night, you know, drain the three at the buzzer when they were down by one. You know, he's 21 years old, Eastern European kid, coming up in the top three, five best players in the NBA right now. Personally, I'd put him at number three, put Giannis number one, LeBron number two, Luca number three. I know that Matt likes to put... Leonard in there. Uh, Mike will swear on anything holy that LeBron is still the greatest. I'll get into that in a little bit. Uh, My point is, is that watching all these guys walking, watching Dame Lillard, you know, single-handedly bring um, Portland into the playoffs, watching Giannis do his thing uh, for the Bucks, watching all these guys just light it up is just, it's cool to see. And it's cool because on the show, a uh, twist the week in sports talk on Saturday. I was talking to um, S- Steve DeMiglio, golf writer for USA Today, and I was asking him a lot of questions about, um, you know, what's better, the age of Tiger or the age of 10 guys who any one of them could be Tiger for that week, you know, kind of blow out the field. And he argued that you're never going to see another Tiger again. Well, I love the age of basketball we're living in because it's the same as golf. There is no clear cut, you know, best player, you know, for a series. Is Giannis right now the MVP? Like I said, I'll get into that in a second. Is LeBron the best player of the past 20 years? I I believe so. Best of all time, it's hard to say. I know Mike will argue with me, but I believe the the eras were different. Um, And uh, so having said that, what I really appreciate out of this day and age is you can turn on the TV knowing there's going to be an NBA game on and watch Dame Lillard light it up. Watch Luca last night. Watch Giannis just out, man, guys. Or watch LeBron still do something he's been doing for 20 years. And, you know, it's fun to watch. It's fun to watch just the overall just craziness of the sport and just how many guys are relevant. Let's look at the comments here. What do we got here? We got Steve Curtis, go Packers. That's my boy. Darn right, go Packers. All right. So, so like I said, when we're going into the moment of Zen, talking, what I'm really enjoying right now is just the amount of players and the level and the high quality of players. Back in Jordan's day, it was Jordan's the best, and who's going to be second fiddle? Was it Patrick Ewing? Was it Charles Barkley? Was it Carl Malone? Akeem Olajuwon, who was it? Who's going to be second fiddle? Now there's a legitimate argument every year for who is the number one MVP. So I'm really enjoying all of this. Uh, Moving on, as I at times tend to do, I tend to transition. So outside the arena, speaking of MVP, if you watch Twist the Week in Sports Talk, what you'll see a lot or you hear a lot is, You'll see Mike and I argue over who is the MVP this year. I strongly believe in basketball. It is Giannis. Mike will swear up and down that it's uh, that it's LeBron. And Matt will chime in. You know, depending he'll you know a lot of times he he likes Kawhi Leonard. Overall, Matt likes Kawhi Leonard. Although I think even Matt will say that as far as MVP this year is concerned, it's going to come, it's going to be either Giannis or LeBron. Personally, I think Giannis had it won before uh, quarantine, before all that isolation. And I don't think that LeBron's done enough because he didn't have to um, with the eight games that LA played. He didn't have to blow anyone up. Um, So I think that Giannis is going to end up winning the MVP. But what I wanted to discuss, and Mike and Matt will tell you this, um, I like to come up with analogies, comparisons, if you will, uh, different ways that we can compare different life situations to things in the sports world. Well, what I wanted to talk about was how we pick the MVP in any sport. I can be talking about football. I can be talking about baseball. But for the sake of this argument, just because it's most current, the reference I'm going to be bringing up and the analogy I'm going to bring up is the Giannis versus LeBron MVP argument for 2020, 2019, 2020 season versus how we're deciding who we vote for, for president of the United States. Seems like an easy little analogy. Seems like an easy comparison. Here's my point. 
is LeBron James the best player in the MVP, the best player in basketball right now? Maybe. Is Giannis? Maybe. Are either one of them perfect? Head and shoulders above the rest. No questions asked. Every statistical category, you're going to see one of those two names as number one. No. Not at all. Is LeBron a good defender? Yes. Is Giannis Antetokounmpo an, a first-team all-defensive player in the NBA? Yes. Is LeBron a great scorer? Yes. Is Giannis a great scorer? Yes. Is uh, LeBron a better facilitator? Pass the ball off, move without the ball better than Giannis? Yes. Here's my point. They both will be in the top five in every one of the categories I mentioned. However, neither one of them is number one overall. So how do I judge who I want to pick for BM MVP? I'll be honest. I'm from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Went to college in Milwaukee. Um, grew up 20 minutes away from Milwaukee. I'm going to side with Giannis because I'm a hometown guy. Mike's going to side with LeBron. LeBron and Mike are the same age. Mike has watched LeBron's career since high school. Mike is a huge LeBron fan. Mike is also going to be as impartial towards LeBron as I am going to be to Giannis. But Mike will also have to make the the statistical agreement that LeBron is not number one in all those categories. And it's not LeBron or Giannis. Some of them, you know, James Harden is going to be number one in scoring. My point is, is that Mike is going to make his argument based on what he believes, his perception of MVP. So am I. Voting for president, same thing. I look at what are my issues that I care about. What are the things I care about that I hold true to me? What are the things that someone else might? You know, right now, I am looking at who I'm going to vote for in the beginning of November as a 44-year-old father of two who lives in Minneapolis, outside of Minneapolis, Minnesota, and has all the other, you know, statistical baggage and life baggage that I carry with me. So all of the passions that I have in life are going to be put into, you know, the old GBG noodle and what's going to come out. Well, I'm going to look at both candidates, whether it's Joe Biden or Donald Trump. And I'm going to say, which one of these two guys fits my personal, the GBG agenda better. Just like voting for MVP. What am I not going to do? Like I mentioned on one of the first episodes of of, uh, Green Day Greg, I'm not going to look to see who Oprah Winfrey wants to vote for or Michael Jordan or Denzel Washington or Tom Cruise or um, who won these other jackasses, Alec Baldwin or Rosie O'Donnell. I think those two jack wagons are the two who said that they would move to Canada if Trump won. And here they are still sitting in America. I'm not going to go to those people and look to see who they want because they have nothing in common with me. But what I, but you know, so what I tend to do is I tend to, you know, watch the debates. How does this guy handle himself? This candidate versus this candidate. How does this candidate answer questions that are passionate to GBG, to Green Bay Greg? And then I base my, then I, then I fact check. Not only do I fact check, but I look at it. I'm like, okay, how long has this guy been in? Has this guy been doing this? Is this, what's, do I want a guy who's, you know, been in politics for 40 years? Do I want someone who's an outsider, more of a businessman? Obviously, you know who I'm talking about. My point is that I have my personal views that I bring with me to the polling box. I'm not going to bring anyone else's. It's me, myself, and I. I can disagree with someone, but if you're going to treat me like a human being, I would love to have the discussion with you as to who I'm going to vote for and why. It is what it is. Now, so that's it's the same thing as voting for MVP. I'm not, it's it's not like I'm voting for Giannis if I had a vote and I say, no, LeBron's a bum. LeBron, LeBron doesn't even need to be starting on an NBA team. No, of course not. It's just because of everything I said and the way I enjoy watching basketball, I would pick Giannis, and it does have personal favorites, just like our politics, just like who we're voting for. We have personal agendas. Let's not deny it. But for the love of God, let's stop denying it. Jeez. Here we go. GBG Challenge. Last week, I got passionate about, you know, the different things that we see on social media. What I'd like everyone to do is do some fact-checking. 
And not only two things, two challenges this week. Number one, do some fact checking. If you see things and you see, ooh, this candidate was linked to Jeffrey Epstein, find out why and find out what it was about. I did. And a lot of the reason why I'm voting is based on some of that. You know, then I realized the entire Democratic Party's quote unquote dealing with a lot of different stuff. But I did learn that Donald Trump did have business relationships with Jeffrey Epstein. And then, um, Donald Trump canceled, broke off all of the relationship that he had with him from a business standpoint with him when he learned that he was involved in very shady, underhanded things that can be perceived as pedophilia. Democratic Party didn't exactly have that strong of a stance on it. Other things I want to do is I I just want people to just put more thought into things. Who are you voting for? Why are you doing it? Who are your sources? I see stuff on Facebook all the time. Vote for this guy. This guy sucks. This guy's terrible. This guy's the greatest. Great. What am I also going to do? I'm going to look up your profile. Let's see what type of person you are. Sorry, but if you're 21 years old, you're living in your parents' basement, you don't have a job, you have 17 piercings in your face, you have purple hair, and you think that the government is out to ruin us, and you're conspiracy and you're a conspiracy theorist where you think that you know we're being controlled by all of these fictitious. You just have, in other words, a lot of crazy, outlandish things going on in your head. Probably not going to take you seriously not exactly the most credible human being. You know, what am I am? What am I going to do? I'm going to look at someone else who might be 44 years old or give or take, might have kids that they're looking after and say, okay, that person is F you. Let me see what they're about. Okay. They hold up. Let me look more into this. I'm not going to base my opinion on it, but they might hold a little more credence, a little more credibility. Why? They might be swimming in the same ocean I am. So the po- my point is look into things, look a little deeper into things. And you know what? Stop being so offended as a freaking society. We're offended by everything. And for some reason, okay, let me get this straight. So we're eliminating any reference to the Dukes of Hazard because they have the Confederate flag on top of their car, which was known as the General Lee. Okay, that's wrong. I get it. If that's what you want to do, if that's what your stance is. We're changing um, the lake. It used to be called Lake Calhoun here in Minneapolis. Now it's Bidet Makaska. Why? Because we hear different But... One of the most popular musicals of all time, especially in current age, Hamilton is still allowed to play, even though Alexander Hamilton was a slave owner. Why? Because it's catchy music. So apparently, Democrats, you you don't want like Calhoun because Calhoun was a slave owner. We can't have the General Lee because it's referencing slavery and Confederacy, but we can hold on to Hamilton. Why? Because those jack wagons on stage insult the vice president of the United States and because we think the music is catchy. This is why I can't stand Democrats, because you're not consistent. And most of you just go with the whoa. I don't I don't like this. But you know what? I like this because it makes me happy. It's not about being happy sometimes. Life sometimes about making tough choices. And you know what tough choices are? Telling your kids, you know what? There are a lot of people who are part of this country who helped, you know, form this country, founding fathers, and they did things that I don't want you guys to do, that I wouldn't do when it comes to slavery, when it comes to the way that women were treated. But you know what? They were the founding fathers of our country, and we learn from our mistakes. We learn from situations that we dealt with in the past. So you know what? We live and we learn. We don't black paint over something or paint over something and then forget it ever happened. We learn and we move on. If you want Hamilton, fine, but be consistent. Keep Calhoun, keep the General Lee, keep the Dukes of Hazzard, keep all this other stuff. Just be consistent. GBG 